<laughs> gratitude. Gratitude changes everything. It's transformational. Gratitude is personally healing. It empowers you to be more authentically and confidently you. Gratitude helps us develop a deep sense of trust in ourselves and handle those unthinkable forces in the world right now and forever that are constantly changing and are chaotic and complex. Gratitude opens our eyes to the reality and gives us practical actions and ways so we can move forward in a positive way as opposed to a negative way. So gratitude is the answer to the problem. So what's the problem you ask? That is the question. So Gurma, first of all, thank you for approaching me and asking me to contribute to the gratitude initiative. I am so honored. If I spark just one, one gratitude flame, inspire one person, one group, one business to build a stronger gratitude muscle, I'm grateful. I'm good. So what is the problem? There are so many problems in the world right now. Big ones, little ones, personal ones, pink ones, purple ones, all shapes and sizes. Take your pick of the problem. And gratitude is the answer. Or at least the starting point, the entry point to handling these personal problems, business problems, world problems. So why? Why am I convinced that gratitude's the answer? Why? Two reasons. Two reasons. History and science. We know gratitude works because it's been around thousands of years. It's probably been as, around as long as humans have. Every major religion has incorporated into it some form of appreciation or gratitude. Judaism says that true gratitude is when you acknowledge the blessings that are part of your everyday life. It's woven into thousand years of Jewish thought, the idea that you must take time to recognize what you have now and today with rituals that make a fulfilled life. So if you lose your job, you still have your health. If you lose your health, you still have your family. If you lose your that, 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 you're still breathing. We wake up being grateful for the plumbing, the toilet, waking up, always something to be grateful for and it's part of everyday life. In Christianity, a believer is grateful to God. We pray to God all the time for having taken the burden of the believer's sins. This gratitude, this thankfulness is advocated by civil people. And isn't it what we want right now in the world? Civil people to solve problems peacefully? Wouldn't that be great? So the second reason, in addition to religion and history of humankind, we know that gratitude is the solution to the problem is science. How do we know science works? Again, I'm not a scientist, but I did start my career as an engineer, an engineer who worked closely with scientists. And I wasn't a very good engineer, but I was really good at translating and paraphrasing science and technology and research to make it into something useful and meaningful solutions. I love studying science and technology and what I love even more about it when it helps us as human beings. I love being a practitioner, making things real and meaningful. That's how I approach gratitude is. Um, so here's my simplified way to explain from a scientific point of view why gratitude is the solution. So when I started studying gratitude in detail because of the problems, personal problems I was having in my life, I pulled hundreds of scientific research studies from the Boston University Online Library, where I used to teach leadership and communication for project managers. So what I noticed about gratitude is that the studies, the research studies fell into two categories, social science and neuroscience. The social science ones were really interesting, I thought, and fun to read. Um, the bottom line of the social science ones were, if you did this, then this happens. So here's, here's a quick story about the social science. So if there's two groups of people, one group of people, and they're both going to play board games, okay? You give people money. It's a study, right? So this group of people, you give a bunch of money and say, go play the game, try to win. The second group of people, you give them money and say, go play the game, try to win, and you show them gratitude. We're so grateful you're here. We're so grateful you took time. It has to be authentic gratitude. We're so grateful you're willing to try this experiment, and you just praise them with authentic gratitude. Grateful group, not 
not anything group, neither one way or the other. And guess which group won over and over in something like 90% of the cases, the grateful group, the grateful group. Why? Well, you could say they take more risks, they feel better, they're more open, they're more innovative, they're working together, all sorts of reasons you can get from that. That's a type of social science. Lots and lots of those out there. There's even things that say if you if you um, study social science, if you do 10 minutes of gratitude a day, you'll be happier for 30% of your day. All sorts of things like that goes on and on and on. Really, really great. So the second study is neuroscience. So neuroscience is more technical, more scientific, <laughs> less disputable, and it's a science really in its infancy. Neuroscience says that we as humans, I love this, are nothing more than nerves. Billions of neurons are our nerves because the neurons talk to each other and they communicate and chemicals. So we're nothing more than these electrical pulses, neurons and chemicals of which 99% of the chemicals are oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium, and phosphorus. Okay, so chemicals and nerves, neurons, that's all we are. And you can measure nerves and chemicals, right? As they respond to external events. So an external event could be emotional, a baby born, a parent dies. The events could be physical, someone hits you, or someone hugs you. <laughs> and we can measure how our neurons and chemicals react to these events, including our own thinking. When it becomes grateful, our neurons and chemicals. There are billions of these neurons that, that, that communicate, that release these chemicals, these good chemicals. So the neurons communicate the good chemicals and we can measure our body's physical response to being grateful. It's stronger and more open and all sorts of things. So you can actually try this yourself in a really quick experiment in your in, in your life. So he, here's, here's the experiment. And if we had all these things hooked up to us and were measured, similar results would happen. So think of something that you're grateful in your life about. I am so grateful. I can go there, I'm just so grateful. Just, I mean, and look and observe what happens to your body. When I flood my body with gratitude thoughts, my hands become open, my hands go to my heart. I breathe deeper, I talk slower. Now think about something you're really angry about. You're about to, you would, you, oh, you were just, just angry about. Think about that. Watch your body, watch my body. My hands naturally clench. I talk faster, my face looks different. <laughs> so those are all those chemicals and everything. So we know from neuroscience that gratitude works. It floods our body with different chemicals and communicates out, okay? It's why we watch puppies and babies on social media because our body floods out positive chemicals and we feel good, okay? And when we feel good, we're more innovative, we're more engaged. And here's the other thing that I really like about what neuroscience proves, gratitude is contagious. So if I'm grateful, uh, it has to be authentically, authentically again, because our bodies can tell when I'm grateful, you're grateful. We have a better chance of the people around us becoming grateful. So I am sold. I am absolutely sold that history and science shows us that gratitude is the solution. Pick a problem. Pick any problem. Think of your current problems. Your business is the world. Gratitude is the solution. Gratitude works. And how can we get more of the solution? This is where the practitioner comes in and the contagious. We know from neuroscience, again, it's contagious and you can grow your gratitude muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it becomes. We can use gratitude as an approach to build strong gratitude muscles. And we can use it as an approach. My focus is bringing more gratitude to the workplace. I focus on uh, my business. My focus is bringing gratitude into businesses. And how can you do that in a way that's acceptable and natural and authentic and promotes and pushes the business's goals and initiatives, okay? Some of us are naturally, because of our upbringing or whatever, more grateful for the others to start with. You know, I teach these leaders and work with them how to really make strong gratitude muscles. And it does uh, sort of bleed over into personal lives or our personal lives bleeds into business. Um, how can you do it as a leader for your team or for your culture? 
when you have a difficult challenge that you have to address in business or anywhere, um, start with showing what you are grateful for to be in that situation. Start with, I'm grateful for this, this, and this. Then get to the difficult and hard. It changes the whole trajectory of the conversation. It transforms where the conversation ends up. Just ask grandma. That's one approach I teach. There are many, many more approaches that I have to teach. I have some in my book, and I have some that I've sort of developed after the book. The book's about a year old. Um, how you can bring more gratitude to your business, either as an approach or building a strong muscle. It's really, the muscle is, I have to say this, it sounds obvious. I keep calling it a muscle because a muscle can be built to be stronger by practicing daily practices. It's important to find the practice that works for you. For me, it's writing. For other people, it's speaking. For one person I had, it was dancing. Whatever works for you. So what I'm going to leave you with is gratitude for grandma for asking me to share and talk about gratitude. It works to solve problems. It's building a practice and approach. Know that gratitude is the solution. It is the starting point to problems big and small in businesses, in personal lives, in the world. And we know this because of science and technology. So there are two books I mentioned, um, Leading with Gratitude. It is a it is about, it's more business focused, bringing gratitude into business with tons of stories and interviews from people like Gurma. And then I have a follow up, a leader's gratitude journal, which is more about a place for you to write all of your gratitude, to build your muscle and your practice. So if you want to learn more about these books, you can check them out on the website, www, of course, leadingwithgratitude.net leadingwithgratitude.net. So the books and the journal and more information about how to contact me to speak or to do a workshop on these topics. So I will leave you with gratitude to you for showing up gratitude to Irma and a challenge. Start your next three conversations. Lead with gratitude. Start with saying out loud what you're grateful for before you jump into the conversation. So that's all for now. This is Star Dargan, leadingwithgratitude.net. 